Hey, uh, Professor Hartree. How many know Professor Hartree? Oh, man. I asked Professor Hartree, what kind of introduction do you want me to give? He said, tell him my name is Kim Hartree. I teach in the econ department. I've been here two years, and I'm from Australia. There you are. Welcome, <laughs> Dr. Hartree. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. When February comes around, I like to give flowers to my wife, Jenny, for Valentine's Day. This annual event has been a tradition between us. And, you know, for the most part, over the years, uh, the simple act of having flowers delivered has been a winner for me. <laughs> but there was one year when it all went spectacularly wrong. I remember it vividly on that fateful fe February morning. I dialed the local flower store to arrange the usual delivery of, to our home. I, I placed my standard order, a dozen red roses, and the clerk on the other end of the phone went through the familiar retail routine. She recorded my request, she wrote down the delivery address, and then entered my credit card details into the system. And later that day, the flowers arrived as expected, Jenny was delighted, said they were beautiful, or words to that effect. And she was glowing, and I got to bask in the glory of my romantic gesture. <laughs> A few days passed, and then it happened. I arrived home from work one day to discover my wife sitting at the kitchen bench, perplexed. Though she remained composed and calm, something about her demeanor told me that things weren't quite right. Something the matter, I asked. She said, the monthly credit card statement arrived in the afternoon mail. Still, I was none the wiser. She continued, I was casually scanning the statement for February when I noticed something irregular. It shows that two lots of flowers were purchased on Valentine's Day. <laughs> now I could see where she was coming from, right? And uh, Jenny knew that she had received only one bunch of flowers that day. <laughs> and naturally, she was curious to know what had become of the other one. In fact, curious is a gross understatement. <laughs> she was positively fascinated to hear my explanation. <laughs> and you know, if somewhere there is a hall of fame for husbands who find themselves in sticky situations, then my name should be right up there amongst the greatest of all time. I was lost for words. I, I had absolutely no idea what had happened. So I, I don't remember much about the rest of that evening. Somehow I stumbled my way through. But the next day I, I called the flower store and the bank and after a lengthy process, the mystery was finally solved. The clerk had re recorded mistakenly the transaction twice. And it was a simple case of double counting. I'm not sure who was more relieved to have that cleared up, Jenny or me, but suffice to say we can both laugh about it now. You know, 2,000 years ago, God sent the ultimate Valentine in the person of Jesus Christ. And in John 3:16, we read, for God so loved the world. God is in the love business. He traffics in that. Love is his currency. He has cornered the market. He's got the best price in town. He owns the factory. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That word everlasting has intrigued me. I remember when I was beginning college, I was a freshman and I was having a conversation with an older Christian, somebody that I respected greatly, and he sat patiently listening to all of my plans and my dreams for the future. And then after a brief pause, he asked me this question. Tell me, who is weaving your dreams? I was stunned. Nobody had ever asked me that question before. After all, I had simply assumed that naturally, since they were my dreams, I should be the one to weave them. So I asked him what he meant, and he said this, 
He said, we each encounter two worlds. One is the world of parents and kids, boyfriends and girlfriends, husbands and wives, bosses and workers, banks and mortgages, the world of budgets, bottom lines, deadlines, headlines, traffic jams, birthdays and takeaways. Or words to that effect. But the other world, he said, equally real, is the world of miracles and moments, origins and destinies, searching and believing, heaven and hell, the world of men rising from the dead, of ancient scriptures, now times, end times, salvation, judgment, worship and wonder. This is the everlasting world. And he said, you better make sure that whatever dream you're weaving goes beyond just this everyday world and will last into the everlasting world. God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life, believes in him. It's a deep and rich phrase, but something I often think about is that, you know, when I was growing up and going to school, I used to catch the train to school in Sydney, Australia. And uh, a game we used to play as teenagers was to try to keep our one foot on the train and one foot on the platform for as long as we could. <laughs> but eventually I had to make a, a choice, I had to make a decision. And I kind of think of believing like that. And I guess for a long time in my life I tried to keep one foot on the train and one on the platform. But eventually I realized I had to take my foot off the platform and get on the train. God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. He gave his only son. I remember the astronaut James Irwin being interviewed when he returned from the Apollo mission. He was the first guy to drive the moon buggy on the, on the moon. And he's a Christian. And the journalist said to him, wow, it must have been wonderful to walk on the moon. And James Irwin replied, yes, it is truly a remarkable thing for man to walk on the moon. But it's nothing compared with the fact that 2,000 years ago, God walked on the earth. God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Or if I can rephrase that in the words from my own story. God so saw the world as his valentine. He walked on the earth in the man Jesus Christ. So that whoever takes his foot off the platform and gets on the train will not perish. But will live forever in the age of miracles and moments, origins and destinies, searching and believing, heaven and hell, of men risen from the dead of ancient scriptures, now times, end times, salvation, judgment, worship, and wonder. Let's pray. Father, we love the way that you love us, the way we are, but too much to leave us that way. Help each of us to believe in the one you sent, and in so believing, have everlasting life. Amen.